Welcome to the Financial Life Podcast with me, Ben Robel. This is episode 22. Thanks for tuning in. Happy Thanksgiving and happy Black Friday. Today, we're going to discuss debt and the two different but simultaneous conversations about it. Let me emphasize once again that I don't know you and you don't know me, so I'm not recommending anything in this episode. Instead, I want to make sure that you can make decisions for yourself and for your family with as much context as possible. This past week, I posted a short clip on my Instagram account from Trevor Noah, the host of The Daily Show. In it, he discusses Elon Musk and his process for purchasing Twitter that did not involve selling or getting taxed on the sale of any of his Tesla stock. In my view, his description of the situation is accurate, but it also flies in the face of the conventional wisdom that you hear from personal finance commentators. How can so many people spend so much time telling everyone to avoid debt and to prioritize paying it off while the wealthy are so frequently advised to use it? Let's dig into the details. Now, when we built our framework for budgeting, we made two important distinctions. The first was the difference between wealth creating assets and possessions. As a reminder, assets are investments you make that you expect to grow your wealth. This doesn't mean that they will, but they could, and that is why you buy them. Possessions are things that you have, but that do not grow your wealth. This can include expensive and important items, like a car that, unless it is a classic, loses value over time in the form of depreciation. The second distinction we made was in the context of the budgeting equation. The basics, income less spending, gives you either a surplus or a deficit. A deficit is usually debt, while a surplus can be allocated to saving, investing, insuring, or gifting as broad categories. The purchase of a possession is allocated to the spending category, not to the investing category. Why does this matter? It matters because nobody is being counseled to accumulate debt for spending. That is, day-to-day expenses and buying possessions. Nobody. Accumulating debt for these reasons can quickly create financial problems that compound on themselves and that can leave people on the debt treadmill. If this is true, then what are we talking about? What advice are the wealthy getting that is different from the ideas that everyone else is hearing? First, it's important to highlight that the most important tactic that the wealthy use to maintain their wealth is tax efficiency. This doesn't mean tax dodging or doing anything illegal, no matter what you see on the news or on social media. But it does mean understanding or hiring people who understand the law and then making investments and decisions within that framework. In practice, this means that wealthy people are generally being counseled to use debt to purchase wealth-creating assets. This is true even when they have the money to make those purchases using only cash. And this is the idea that Trevor Noah discusses in his clip. Elon borrows money against his Tesla shares to buy Twitter, and then he gets private equity funds to purchase that equity from him to reduce the debt load. So how is Elon being tax efficient when he uses this strategy? If you have an appreciated asset, like your house or some other real estate, stock, or any other property. You can sell it and then use the net proceeds to do something else. But I say net proceeds because you will pay capital gains tax on the appreciation of the asset, the value you sell it for minus your purchase price. Instead, if you borrow money against the appreciated asset, you don't sell it, and therefore you don't pay the capital gains tax. In addition, The money that is now in your account is not income or proceeds from the sale. It's just debt, so it isn't taxed. If you then use this money to buy more wealth-creating investments or assets, you can create a virtuous circle. In fact, in many scenarios, you can even deduct the interest from the debt against your taxes because you used the money to make an investment. Now, the old saying goes that without debt, you can't go bankrupt you can just go broke. And it is true that adding debt to this process of investment makes it riskier. But this problem comes up if you make bad investments. And on the other hand, making bad investments will hurt you financially anyway. 
it's not to say that these two scenarios are equivalent, but it means that you have to make good decisions on all fronts to be successful. To summarize, few people have access to a large menu of investments that are that much better performing than basic stocks, bonds, and the things that are available to almost all of us. On the other hand, being efficient with taxes is a critical tool to maintaining wealth. Thanks for listening. I hope this is helpful context for you and your financial life.